Hey guys, I'm just out looking for satellites and can never seem to see any. Uh, everything that we're told through the media tells us that we're surrounded by them and they're all out in space. But, you know, as I've kind of been on this journey of trying to figure out how far away the moon is seeming that it's closer than we're told I would think that we would be able to see satellites whizzing between us and the moon at a constant rate um, you know all the pictures that you you know Google or whatever server you use you bring up shows you that there's all these satellites out there and that we're surrounded by them and so we should be able to see them but what I think is the reason we can't see them is because they're inside of the Earth's atmosphere the moon is much closer than we're told and um, makes me question you know what space is in general so satellites if they are real are they just turbine driven free energy engines that are um, inside the Earth's atmosphere. I don't know. They look like them. They look like turbines. The coolest idea I've heard recently for ion engines is the idea of an air-breathing engine under development by the European Space Agency. Instead of carrying any propellant at all, engineers at ESA demonstrated that a spacecraft in low Earth orbit should be able to pull in molecules of air right from the atmosphere and then ionize them and blast them back out. Since the spacecraft would be using unlimited solar electricity for power and pulling its propellant from the atmosphere it could operate without refueling, essentially forever. Spacecraft could operate at lower altitudes and space stations could remain in low Earth orbit indefinitely without needing to be reboosted. It's gonna be a real game changer. People always ask me why we're stuck with chemical rockets. Seriously, exploding a bunch of hydrogen or kerosene is the best that we can do? Good news. There are other exotic science fiction sounding propulsion systems out there which use electromagnetic fields to accelerate atoms allowing their spacecraft to accelerate for months at a time. I'm talking about ion engines of course and several spacecraft have already used these exotic thrusters to perform some of the most amazing missions in the exploration of the solar system. There are other ways ion thrusters can be scaled up. NASA is testing a high thrust version of ion engines known as the X3 Hall thruster. This engine is capable of blasting out ions and produces 5.4 newtons of force. Again, not much, but remember that previous thrusters top out in the thousands of newtons. I said that ion engines produce very little thrust, but there are some ideas to boost their output. The first is dramatically increase the amount of electricity that you're using to accelerate the ions. Instead of solar panels, NASA considered creating an ion engine powered by a nuclear reactor. The greatest machines that push air is the jet engine. Jet engines suck air in the front and push a jet of air out the back. That force is called thrust, and it moves an airplane through the sky. Let's see how it works. A big fan at the front of the engine pulls air around the engine and sucks air into the core. We'll come back to that outside air in a moment. For now, 
Let's follow the air in the core. It goes into a compressor. Something like many household fans joined together. Each fan gets smaller and smaller as the blades squeeze the air into a tighter and tighter space. Compressing the air like you would squeeze a balloon. The turbine is like a windmill that scoops up energy from the heated air and spins the shaft connected to the fan at the front of the engine. The excess hot air from the combustor blows out the back of the engine, producing thrust. Remember that air rushing outside the engine core? Together, the turbine and fan push a larger mass of air than the core ever can for much more thrust. But that extra air passing around the engine core works more efficiently if it moves more slowly than the hot air rushing out the combustor and the back of the engine. The coolest idea I've heard recently for ION engines is the idea of an air-breathing engine under development by the European Space Agency. Instead of carrying any propellant at all, engineers at ESA demonstrated that a spacecraft in low Earth orbit should be able to pull in molecules of air right from the atmosphere and then ionize them and blast them back out. Since the spacecraft would be using unlimited solar electricity for power and pulling its propellant from the atmosphere, it could operate without refueling, essentially forever. Spacecraft could operate at lower altitudes, and space stations could remain in low Earth orbit indefinitely without needing to be reboosted. It's going to be a real game changer. A 550 metric ton Falcon Heavy is carrying almost 400 tons of fuel and oxidizer. The first stage will only burn for 162 seconds, and the second stage will fire for 397 seconds. That gives you a total burn time of about 9.5 minutes. Want to make some maneuvers? Want to accelerate for days, weeks, or even months? Too bad, you are out of fuel. Of course, these shortcomings from chemical rockets have led scientists to search for other forms of propulsion, especially when you're out in space, and one of the most successful so far is the ion thruster. When you're working out the rocket equation, an important factor is the velocity that you're ejecting your propellant. The most efficient chemical rocket can throw hot gases out the back at 5 kilometers per second. Ion engines, on the other hand, can eject individual atoms 90 kilometers a second. This high velocity gives the spacecraft a much more efficient acceleration. The best chemical rockets see a fuel efficiency of about 35% while ion engines see an efficiency of 90%. So how do ion thrusters work? It's actually pretty weird and totally sounds like science fiction. Instead of hot gases, ion thrusters eject ions, which are atoms or molecules which have an electrical charge because they've lost or gained an electron. In the case of an ion engine, they're emitting positively charged ions which have lost an electron. Once you've got ions, you can direct them with a magnetic field, accelerating them into space at tremendous speeds. So where do they get all the ions? The thrusters create them by generating a plasma inside the spacecraft, and they bombard neutral propellant atoms of some gas like xenon with electrons. 
These collisions release even more electrons from the propellant, turning them into positively charged ions. This plasma soup of electrons and positively charged ions has an overall neutral charge. The electrons are held in the chamber, leading to more ionizing events, while the positive ions are siphoned out through a grid at the end of the chamber. As they pass through this grid, high voltage accelerates them out the back of the spacecraft at speeds of up to 90 kilometers per second. For each ionized particle that the spacecraft can kick out, it gets a tiny kick in return. The whole system is powered by solar panels, so the spacecraft itself doesn't need to carry any kind of battery or power system, minimizing the total weight that it has to carry. The big problem is that the kick really is tiny. The thrust of ion engines is measured in millinewtons, like thousandths of a newton. Hold a piece of paper in your hand, that's the kind of forces involved. But they can operate for days, weeks, even months, accelerating and accelerating long after chemical rockets would have run out of fuel. So if you're already out of the gravity well of a planet, they're very efficient engines for dramatic changes in velocity. NASA and other space agencies have actually used ion engines very successfully in a range of missions. They've been developing this thruster concept for decades, but were never willing to risk it on an active mission where a failure could end it. So NASA gathered up a bunch of these risky technologies and packed them together as the Deep Space One mission, which launched in 1998. Deep Space One was equipped with 12 different technologies that NASA wanted to test out, including low power electronics, solar concentrator arrays, various scientific instruments, and a solar electric propulsion system. 